presentation. The Gonzaga Bulldogs take on the Maine Black Bears as WX College basketball starts right now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center on the campus at Gonzaga University. We've got West Coast Conference women's basketball up for you next as the 23rd ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs are hosting the Maine Black Bears. They are three and three overall. The Zags now five and one after a historic week of, of basketball for them in the Bahamas. Great to see everyone again. Greg Heister, Michelle Clark. Let's talk about this trip in the Bahamas. Two of the greatest wins the program's ever had. Yes, oh my goodness, Greg. Amazing for these guys to go in there, not have a ranking to start the season, and then knock off two ranked teams. They're doing what Gondega does best already, which is spreading the wealth. That's what they do. They've already got four players averaging double figures, and they're doing what they know how to do. They do this every single season, and they're coming in today with a 23 ranking. And right now, for my money, Yvonne Egypt will be the player of the year in the West Coast Conference. 100% she will. She has the whole entire toolkit and what it takes to be that player. She is the leader, the director of this team, and I'm excited to see what she does this season. And she also did it in that tournament down the stretch of the games. When it matters most, yeah. she stood, uh, stood up for her team. Yep, she does. And she she's that pinnacle for them. You know, they look to her in those difficult situations and she pulls them through. All right, let's talk about the main Black Bears. You know, most people think it's a hockey school, and it is, but they play basketball too. But an interesting style of basketball. It's going to be fun tonight. Yes, it will be fun. They run a very disruptive offense. Gonzaga's going to have their work cut out for them defensively. They are a rhythm-based team, and when they have rhythm, they can be very hard to guard. So Gonzaga's going to need to do a good job of knowing where those key shooters are, keeping a hand in their face, and making sure that Gonzaga sets the tone for what they want them to do defensively. If not, Maine may, may have a chance at this. Yeah, Maine with three players that shoot it from behind the arc at better than 37%. They're gonna look to shoot it, shoot it quick. It's Gonzaga, it's Maine, it's college basketball on SWX, West Coast Conference women's basketball. Starting lineups, the tip off when we come back. I mean, Colin's a fireman now. What? Hey, Greg. Hi, hey. AJ. How you doing? I'm great. So, pecan pie or pumpkin pie? Ooh. That's a tough one, right? Great question. That might be the hardest one. Yeah, pecan, apple. right? Apple. Oh, apple. Oh, apple's a sleeper. What about oh, peach? Oh, no, peach? no, no. Big peach gal. No, really, I love peaches. Right here. AJ, how long have you been in town? I got here in May. So did you get a green bluff peach? I didn't. I'm really sad. Oh, I feel like that was a rite of passage. Lord. Yeah, it kind of is. That's the greatest peach Along on the planet. With the pumpkin donuts. Oh, my God. I dream of those peaches. Hey, Chad, we're busy here. Back. <laughs> All right. All right. We're talking about the important things, you know, like food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. You Sweet. buzz kill. And welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. Tonight's starting lineup brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Pay bills, deposit checks, access your account 24 7 with digital banking at Numerica Credit Union. Plus, show your Bulldog pride with your Zags debit card only at Numerica. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity. 
And this main team keep an eye on Sarah Hodgson, their number zero, shooting it at better than 56% from behind three. Olivia Rockwood will put it up as well. This is a team that loves that three ball. Kaylin Trong in the starting lineup. So is Brenna Maxwell, Michaela Williams, uh, Eliza Hollingsworth, and y Yvonne Egypt. But missing from this lineup is Kaylee Trong. And now we go to A.J. Howell, who's got an injury update for us, A.J. That's right, Greg. So Kaylee is out with a foot injury. We were able to confirm and There's no timeline on when she will return right now, but we know this bench is deep. So we'll see how they handle this game without her. They're also missing Maud Habens and Bree Salenby, and she's been out for quite a while, though. But on the other end of the court, similar situation. The Black Bears are actually missing their leading scorer. That's Ann Simon. So interesting to see how it plays out today. Greg? Thank you, and it will be interesting. Greg Heister, Michelle Clark, Zags. I mean, they, look, this program has scored a lot of points for a long time now, but this team is scoring as easily as it's ever scored. Yeah, and it's fun to see. I mean, they're averaging 75.8 points per game, and they're doing what the Zags do best. Coach Fortier, I mean, this has been her MO since she has been with the Zags, is spread the wealth, right? We don't rely on one player to get the job done. We've got a slew of players. You got Yvonne Ejim averaging 18 points. Maxwell's got 13. Kaylin Trong, 12.3. Eliza Hollinsworth at 10.5. I mean, on any given night, one of them could go off. And we're underway between Gonzaga and Maine. And the last thing I'll say about the Gonzaga, well, not the last thing, for the moment, I'm going to say about this Gonzaga coaching set. It's one thing to get a team there, but they've kept it there for so long now. It's really impressive what's what's going on. It's the buzzword culture, right? Yes. That's what they've built here. Gonzaga's first bucket is a miss, but the offensive rebound put back is up good. And Eliza Hollingsworth, the redshirt junior from Melbourne, scores their first bucket. And nice to see that early. That's been a focus for them is getting on those boards. Nice to see a quick, you know, offensive rebound put back for them. And, of course, Gonzaga's going to have the size advantage against Maine. But may, may not care about that in the end. Here's the nice backdoor and the lay-in by number 15, Paula Gallego. Case in point, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Size can still cut. Maxwell's three is off. Williams with the rebound. And another chance for Gonzaga. Michaela Williams now a junior out of Los Angeles, California. There's the transfer, Brenna Maxwell. And there's the first attempt by Egypt. And the rebound cleared by Maine, and they come back, Adriana Smith. I like to see the Zags hitting it inside early on these guys, though, and flexing their muscle on their bigs down low. Turnover, Trong with it. She's got Maxwell on the wing. But Kaylin takes it inside, draws the foul. And that foul will be called on Sarah Hodgson, the sophomore from Ringe, New Hampshire. I love the offensive decision there by Kaylin Trong. She's driving the floor. She's looking for teammates. You see her eyes up, looking, looking, but no, there's no option. So she's got that one on one. And what does she do? She draws a foul and gets herself to the free throw line. You know the Trong sisters are. You don't get this effect with every player, but it seems like the Trongs just arrived on campus a year ago or so. They're they're seniors already. Michelle. I can you believe that? I know. I know. I keep thinking the same thing too. Like, how is that possible? They're yeah. seniors already, but man, they've had an amazing career here. And a lot of their senior year left. And there's our first three ball, and that goes down by Gallego. And you see this full court press here that Maine is putting on Gonzaga. They run this kind of helter-skelter that got him, you know, in trouble just there on that three-point play. Gonzaga needs to settle down, take a deep breath, set the tone for what they want for this game. Maxwell from the elbow. Good look at Bucket there. Pass from Williams tied at five. That Bucket made it a minute ago by Gallego from three. And she's open again, thought about it. Trong got out there, but Gallego's only shot six threes this year. Made three of them. Hodgson from the corner. That one rimmed off. Rebound earned. Shot blocked by Egypt. Adriana Smith really active inside for me. And Williams, this is a two. Long. 
Hollings were with the offensive rebound. Nobody home on the other end. You're going to see Maine do a lot of this helter-skelter offense, right? They're running off of cuts. They're getting on-ball screens. They're active. All five players are moving around the arc just to disrupt the defense a little bit to either A, get an open backdoor cut for a layup, or a wide open three. Here's Rockwood, 37% shooter from three. Fox in the corner, three is short. Hollingsworth with the long rebound, tied at five. Gonzaga ball. Prong to the post, that ball was kicked. It'll belong to Gonzaga, 6.44 to play here in the first quarter. Maine has hit two of their first five shots. Gonzaga, two of their first six. And coming into the game, Callie Stokes, number 10, as Hollingsworth and Maxwell go out. Esther Little, as well, came into the game, number zero for GU. Here's E. Jim. Strong trying to create some space, and now she'll reset. Ejim there to set the screen. Good look inside. Stokes all alone on the baseline. All alone because Maine got, got caught with that help side D, didn't know where their players were. And great recognition by Kaylin to see that open player on the block. This is Rockwood. Abby Lawrence, number 23, on the floor for Maine as well. She's got the ball now. Borneman drives on Egypt. Good defense. Stokes clears the miss. If can, Gonzaga can force them into more of those drives, they're, they're not as consistent at those. Oh, as that little three. stutter step. Caitlin Trong. Beautiful. That is hard to guard. That's spectacular, partner. That's so good. Looked like Barry Sanders cutting through the, the offensive line there. Her basketball IQ is just amazing. Being able to read the defense and see openings when she does. Nice move inside to finish. Carolyn Borneman, junior from Denmark. 9-7. Keep in mind, this is a Gonzaga team in the last week. Defeated in one poll, number four, Louisville. A four-point loss to Marquette out of the Big East, and then they took down Tennessee. Maine hanging in here early. Egypt, nice catch. I mean, Williams that's, with some that's fire their on bread that and butter in a lot of ways, right? I love that. Getting that Yvonne Egypt active early inside. That's what they need. Get a little inside out game. That was not an easy pass to no, handle. No. Here's Hodgson inside, strong defending. Great job by Caitlin to keep Hodgson away from the bucket. Oh, no look, Stokes, left hand goes. Beautiful, Caitlin just kind of taking over, taking the lead right now, knocking down shots and dishing the ball off to our teammates, just beautiful. That's Caitlin Trong putting it on display here tonight. Three points, watch this little stop and go, oh, nope. There's the bounce to Stokes in transition. Another look, Kaylee Stokes and Gonzaga up 13 to seven. of the game brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. All right, partner, what do you got? You know, Maine has do been doing a good job of maybe what Gonzaga wasn't ready for, that dribble drive. You know, they've gotten to the rim quite often, and they're not as good finishing, 
at the rim as they are at their three-point shooting, but Gonzaga needs to do a better job of holding their own defensively, not allowing those driving lanes, having better help side defense. But you know, all in all, they're doing a pretty good job on the boards, attacking the glass. I love seeing Kaylin take that ownership and that floor general and passing dimes like she has been doing early on. Um, off to a pretty good start. Yeah, what's interesting to watch Maine, they kind of remind you of Gonzaga in the way that the ball never sticks. It's always moving. It's always moving, yep. And normally teams with great ball movement get easy buckets. That'll be the test for Gonzaga's defense tonight. And Simon, step back three goes. 13-10. And that was a deep three. It's hard when you got shooters who can shoot those. And now some press. And there's the turnover, Little unable to keep it in play. So that is turnover number two for Gonzaga. And now Maine, fresh off that three ball a moment ago, can tie it with another three. Gonzaga just needs to take a deep breath when they see that press coming. It's not, you're not going to beat it by the dribble. You're going to beat it by a pass fake and hitting somebody in the middle of the zone there to get the ball moved down the court. Little defending. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Skip pass. And now Borneman on the drive. Missed it. Stokes with the rebound, and she's fouled. Slow to get up. Foul called on number 23, Abby Lawrence, a sophomore from Barcelona, Spain. Peyton Muma, number three on the floor for Gonzaga, got the ball right now. Peyton, a freshman, and there's another turnover. She got trapped on the sideline. Quick hands by Olivia Rockwood. Two of the exact same turnovers by Peyton there, where she's just, she, you can't put the ball on the floor because they're going to come at you like hornets, right? The second she starts doing that, it needs to be a pass fake. And if you're going to dribble, that dribble to go somewhere. Otherwise, the trap's coming. Put your head down and go. J.C. Christopher, number four, with the basketball. Oh, there's a travel. Sarah Taylor. Caitlin Trong really getting it done on both ends of the court right now. That was great defense, just keeping her, her player in front of her, her low defensive stance, and, and she just turned it over for her. You worry, you know, Gonzaga just got home from the sunny, warm Bahamas. Two of the greatest wins in program history. Then they got to play Maine tonight. Snowy night, sleepy night in Spokane. Is this a trap game? You know, I say no excuses. When you got a crowd like they get yeah. here at Gonzaga, man, every game you should get up for. And Stokes doing a great job to try to get back defensively. But Adriana Smith is fouled on the shot and will shoot free throws. You know, great call by Stokes there. Like she knew she was beat, right? So if you're going to foul her, foul her and don't let her make a, a and one, may see if she can prove it at the line here with two. Gonzaga now with four uncharacteristic turnovers. They've hit their last four shots, but now three turnovers in their last minute 39. And dropping the free throw through is Smith, the sophomore from Reston, Virginia. Tell you what, Maine's got quite a re recruiting reach. They've got players from everywhere. All over. And the rebound off that free throw miss. That shot too long. Loose ball in the corner. Hodgson with it. And it's out of play off of Maine's Sarah Hodgson. And here comes Yovan Egypt. Kaylee Stokes gets the rest. Stokes brings great energy off the bench for Gonzaga. Redshirt freshman from Redondo Beach, California. 5'11", but active. Very active. I love her energy on the floor. There's Egypt. And now Kaylin Tron will set up the offense. To the free throw line. Little now will try to get it to the post. Yvonne is open down there. Tron three is short off the front of the rim. Loose. Picked up. And J.C. Christopher on the move, but she has it stripped. Tron trying to get inside. 
Defense is there by Hodgson. Missed it. Loose ball. Maine with the basketball. Black Bears down by two. The three can give them the lead. Adriana Smith drives. Got it back. Shot up. Falls off. Oh, Hollingsworth with the rebound. Home run ball. Egypt running the floor in the finish. Talking about Yvonne Egypt coming through, right? Both ends of the court. Your big man is sprinting her tail off to knock that ball out from behind. And then on the offensive end, running the floor and getting an easy two. She's a fantastic player. Good bounce there. Good defense, though. Zags had that one surrounded. Maxwell, transition three is short. Rebound cleared by Gallego. It does seem like this group that they've got in here for the Zags defensively is finding a better rhythm for defending Maine in this chaotic offense that they're running. Seems like their help side is a little bit better. They've got a little bit more unison with this group. Final minute here in the first quarter. Egypt picks up the personal foul and a chance for three now for Sarah Taylor, the freshman from Wyndham, Maine. I'm sure the thing that Coach Fortier is thinking over there is, man, they, this main team just doesn't stop moving. They're constantly moving everywhere and, and making sure that her team has got good endurance, right? She's subbing out at appropriate times so people have wind and, and air inside their lungs to keep up with this style of offense. Taylor now with three points, and it's a one-point game. Maine. Fresh off a win against Niagara on the 26th of November, lost the night before to Kansas in a tournament down in Moraga, California. So they stopped by Spokane to pick up a game with Gonzaga on the way home. Zags now ranked 23rd in the nation after those great wins. Should have been ranked to start the year. Here's Egypt going to work. Little bounce down there. Abby Lawrence got physical with Yvonne. Caused the turnover. That's five on Gonzaga in this opening quarter. Olivia Rockwood from Windsor, Vermont. Eight on the shot clock. About a second differential between the two. Borneman trying to create space, throws it up with the left hand, and I believe that's a shot clock violation. Gonzaga ball, but just .2 to go here in the quarter. Yeah, great defensive segment there by Gonzaga. Really just digging in deep, not allowing that drive penetration. That shot didn't get off in time. So Gonzaga ends that quarter leading by a point. They were 7 of 14 from the floor, main 5 of 14. The Black Bears with six turnovers, Gonzaga with five turnovers, but the Zags with four turnovers in the last four minutes, 39 seconds. Second quarter when we come back live from the McCarthy Athletic Center.
tonight's Gonzaga basketball broadcast brought to you by Arby's, your delicious neighborhood meat crafter. Stop by Arby's today. Arby's, we have the meats. Well, certainly an entertaining first quarter here between Maine and Gonzaga. Greg Heister and uh, Michelle breaking down for us. I mean, it just looked like Maine was playing harder in that first quarter to me. Yeah, they're more physical right now than Gonzaga is. And you know what? I'm looking at the numbers, and they're pretty evenly matched, right? Turnovers, Maine's got six to Gonzaga's five. Rebounds, Maine's got eight to Gonzaga's nine. You know, they're they're both kind of evenly matched right now, but Maine is being the aggressor. Gonzaga needs to start setting the tone right now defensively and getting stops, getting rebounds, and then offensively, take a breath. Just take a breath and run the <laughs> offense that you want. You don't have to go as fast as they go offensively. The reminder to breathe. <laughs> Peyton Muma, number three, back on the floor for Gonzaga. She's got the ball. There's Egypt near the elbow. Drives to the baseline. Double team came back to Muma. Eight on the shot clock. Peyton waiting for the screen. Will shoot it from the free throw line. That's well, look, she didn't look comfortable at first, but right. found patience, didn't she? she? Yes, I yes. was going to say, that's patience yes. right there. She just took her time. She wanted to get it to Ejim, but then, oh, she's wide open, gathered herself, knocked it down. Peyton, a freshman from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Here's Hodgson, skip to the corner. Three on the way from Borneman. That's off. Muma earns the rebound. Gonzaga up by three. Peyton looks to the bench now for the play. Zags with uh, 11 rebounds in the game. Eight rebounds for Maine. Loose ball picked up. Another turnover. That's six now by GU. And it's when they're they're trying to put the ball down in the paint where there's numbers. That's where Gonzaga's getting in trouble offensively. Hodgson short on that, but an offensive rebound for Carolyn Borneman. Rockwood now back to Borneman. Lawrence. Nice catch inside. Zach's defense is there. But Gallego split him. Here's a chance for three. Each of the rebound. Gonzaga doing a great job defensively flying around, you know, and trying to cover help side and everything. And they're getting lucky that Maine hasn't knocked down a couple shots and they're coming up with the rebounds. Hollingsworth calling for the ball right now. Williams can't find the angle. Deflection out of bounds. Maxwell out of the game. And checking back in is Kaylee Stokes, the redshirt freshman from Redondo Beach. I'd like to see uh, Stokes answer back with some of that aggression that we've been seeing from Maine. Muma with it. Nine on the shot clock. Peyton in the corner. Here's Stokes. Try to drive and now kick. Kayla Williams, two on the shot clock. Jump right away. Egypt. Boy, she came out of nowhere to try to get the rebound, just couldn't grab it. And now a chance in transition for Maine. And a nice job by number five, Sarah Taylor, to pin the foul and earn the trip to the free throw line. Maine just being super scrappy on GU down there. When that ball's in the paint, it doesn't matter. They've got one or two hands slapping at the ball. Gonzaga, they're going to need to flex their muscle a little bit, right? Get those elbows out, chin the ball, and, and bring it up hard, maybe try to draw a foul. Maine does not look afraid right now, do they? Coming into this place where it's next to impossible to defeat Gonzaga. Right. Now a ranked team fresh off those wins. No, Maine looks like they've got a lot of confidence inside of them right now. They're coming off of a good win, right? They're yes. over here on the West Coast trying to show us, you know, what what the American East League is all about. And Maine. Maine ain't no joke now. It's really north. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and taking it away is Smith. Gonzaga now with seven turnovers. And Coach Fortier will be none too happy about that. Corner three, rimmed out. Williams had it, loose ball. Kaylin Tron with it for Gonzaga. She's got Stokes, Williams chasing. And Maine in their transition defense, a good job there. I like Kaylin's patience, though. Bang. Because her patience led to that, right? She could have had a jumper. She's like, let's work it around. 
And hey, I'm going to get a three on the other side. Kaylin Trong from downtown. Just seven of 33 on the season coming in, 21%. But bang that one in when her team needed it. But there's the answer from Sarah Taylor. This freshman lighting it up right now. Now with seven points, she leads Maine in scoring. And she keeps the Black Bears to within two of number 23, Gonzaga. 6.15 to play in the first quarter. Gonzaga 20, Maine 18. Gonzaga fan of the game brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union. Idaho Central Credit Union, your financial success fan club. And there's our Gonzaga fan of the night. And she's serious, too. That is a serious, serious Zag fan. Well, I'll tell you what, you know who's serious right now are these main black bears, aren't they, Michelle Clark? They are very serious, man. We talked about it. They came in here with a lot of confidence you know they're coming off of a win but man anytime you've got a team who can find a rhythm from behind the heart arc it's deadly right and so Gonzaga needs to maybe adjust their defense to find a different way to guard that three-point play out of Maine. Maine shooting just 30 percent from the floor three of ten though from the three-point line Gonzaga at 53 percent and yet Gonzaga leads by just two. Zags with seven turnovers Here's Stokes back to Kaylin Trunk. Six on the shot clock. That's what happens when you got a full court press. It eats that clock. That's a two. And rebound on the weak side by J.C. Christopher. So Maine can take the lead with a three. Taylor already with seven points. Kaylee Stokes out there watching her. Destiny Burton, number one on the floor for GU. Five on the shot clock. Taylor has got to do something. This is Christopher driving the baseline. Got the shot up there, missed it, but she got all the way to the rim. Yeah, Gonzaga got lucky on that one. That was a good look for Maine. Here's Javon Egypt. She's two of three, four points. They got to get her going, don't they, Michelle? Yes, they do. That's important to their inside out game. Yvonne needs to insert herself inside. Oh, it's, helpful. So good. it's helpful when she's got a teammate <laughs> like that who can insert her own self inside off the dribble drive. Yeah. She's so crafty, though. She just understands angles and leverage and just the smallest crack, and she gets through it and gets the ball to the rim. Yep. Here's Smith with a drive, left hand goes. I'll tell you what, Gonzaga is just continuing to get beat off the dribble. They need to contain that dribble drive. I don't know if that's a help side defense. It needs to dig in there on the ball, but something needs to change there defensively. Burton posting up, Trong to Stokes. Williams off the screen, jumper is long. Got it back, dribbles into the corner. Yvonne coming out to set the screen for Kaylin. Kaylin drives, scoops with the left hand, falls off. Burton was there. That's off of a black bear. It's Gonzaga basketball. Another opportunity here for the Zags. 
try to run something, get a good out of bounds play to get that ball, maybe to Yvonne Ejim for, you know, a look inside. Hollingsworth off the inbound. That shot is long. Ejim with the offensive rebound. Shot is up and good. Ejim's release. So it looks like it's like 14 feet in the air. <laughs> Nobody's going to block that. 3.30 to play first half. Ball stripped by Trung. Kaylee Stokes now leads the break. Free throw line, needs help. Almost threw it away. Kaylee no look to Eliza Hollingsworth. Spins, has it stripped away. Maxwell on the floor. Possession arrow favors Gonzaga. I love to see that hustle by Maxwell. In a game like this, yeah, there's a loose ball. You should be diving over that ball to try to win that 50-50 battle. She was tied up there with Olivia Rockwood. Muma's pass inside. Great catch. Back to Muma. Hollingsworth can't get to it in the corner to be main basketball. I love that out-of-bounds play, though, getting it inside to Ejim. That's exactly what needed to happen. I kind of wanted her to just muscle up and go up with it, but she kicked it out to an open teammate. Probably the right choice. This is Rockwood. Smith looking for someone to cut. Borneman driving on Ejim. Scoop with the left hand falls off. Peyton Muma with the rebound. Gonzaga now on the move again. Say, Maine's transition defense is good. Yeah, they're on it. I mean, they're grabbing their players right from the start. I don't know how many fast break points Gonzaga has, but I bet it's not many. Looks like five, which is not a lot for GU. No. Maxwell missing with the left hand. Long rebound comes all the way to Kaylin Trong. Egypt coming out, sets the screen. Quick trigger, Eliza Maxwell from downtown. Gonzaga's largest lead now is seven. It is nice when they have a big in Hollinsworth who can step out and shoot that three. Yeah, you know, it just expands that defense a little bit. Man, did they need that. And Eliza came into the game seven of 13, 53.8%. But Maine with the answer cuts it back to five. Smith with the bucket. They're doing a better job of breaking that press now, right? Break it with passes, not with dribbles. Zags doing a great job on the board, out rebounding Maine 20 to 12. And Hollingsworth, another one from downtown. Zags have needed this offense. Yes, they have. And she made it look so simple, like, yep, I'm coming out here and I'm going to shoot this. I'm hot. Keep feeding that hot hand. Eliza now three of six in the game, two for two from behind three. Turnover for Maine, their ninth of this half. Another look at Eliza Hollingsworth, doing a great job, number one, to get open. Yep, coming off a little downside screen there by Yvonne Ejim and just knocks it down. She knew she was shooting it before she even got the ball in her hands. What a game changer when one of your bigs could step out on the floor and pull the defender of size out with her. Adriana Smith not in the paint. It should start to open up some lanes. Under a minute to go first half. Here's Trong. Maxwell into the corner. Esther Little. Three on the shot clock. Maxwell's got to shoot it. Got it off in time. Shot may have been blocked. No, there was a whistle and a foul call. There was a lot of body on that as she went up. You know, you can't keep moving into the player as she's in the air with the shot. It's the right call. I didn't see much of an argument over there from their head coach, Amy Bichon. So Brenna Maxwell, the transfer from Utah. What a get she's been. She's going to have some big minutes this season for Gonzaga. Great experience, veteran player, and really shooting. Yeah. You can tell by the stroke I mean, at the come line. come on, yeah, she acted like, man, I do this in my sleep. <laughs> Give me the ball, here's two. 
Brennan now with four points in 13 minutes. Gallego, hand off to Rockwood. Hodgson to the post. Here's Hodgson. Skip. Great vision by Stokes. Gonzaga will play for one. Gonzaga, those last few possessions have found a little rhythm defensively in stopping this aggressive, disruptive Maine offense. Yeah, they've forced Maine now into four turnovers in the last four minutes. And more importantly, Gonzaga's turned those turnovers into points. Maxwell tripped on her way. Was there a whistle and a foul called? I believe there was. Yep. And that will go on Sarah Hodgson with no time remaining on the clock. Britta Maxwell is tripped. Well, that's not really a foul you want to pick up late <laughs> to end the second quarter for not Maine, a, but great for Gonzaga. Not a shooting foul. So obviously the foul happened before the shot, so they put .6 seconds on the clock, which is enough time for Gonzaga to get a shot off. And when you got a player like Yvonne Ejim. Throw it up, right? Yep. Strong. Here it is. Here's the catch. I don't know if she got it off. No, she didn't. No. Great play, though. That's a yes. shot you wanted. They'll take it going into halftime. And Gonzaga, they found a little traction there in the last couple of minutes in this first half. Maine was playing them evenly. Gonzaga goes to the locker room with a 10-point lead. Yeah, you know, and I think they just found a little bit of a rhythm defensively. Stop chasing these guys around. Let's stay in our positions, disrupt them a little bit. And then offensively, Hollinsworth hitting those two threes. That yeah. was big. Find a little rhythm there. All right, AJ, you've got the coach. All right, coach, you went on this last little run to end the first half. How important is that for you guys when you're struggling to make things click? Well, we have to get some stops. We, we finally got some stops and transi some transition, but baskets have been hard to come by, so I think any run that we can make is going to be good for us and important. What is your message to your team at halftime, and what do you need to see out of them coming out of the locker room? Well, we look like we're out of sorts, you know, which is, is usually what happens when we're playing like this, and we, we're, not, we're struggling defensively, we're struggling offensively. We have to get some defensive stops in order to transition and get some layups and some easy baskets. If Eliza doesn't make those threes, it feels a lot different, and so we have to, we have to get some stops. Um, on the defensive end. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. Thanks. Greg? Thank you, AJ. Boy, it was Julian Strother hitting those deep threes the other night for the men's team, right, in that uh, win against Xavier. And it's Eliza Hollingsworth hitting these threes here at the end of the first half for the Gonzaga women's team to kind of really, as Coach said, give this first half a different feel. 32 22, our score at the half. Gonzaga leading the main Black Bears. We'll uh, take a timeout. We'll come back with more in a moment.
Gonzaga Halftime Report brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino. Join us at Coeur d'Alene Casino for a mouthwatering steak dinner, pampering spa treatment, or the hottest schemes around. Coeur d'Alene Casino, a proud sponsor of Gonzaga Athletics. Coeur d'Alene Casino, welcome home. We are at the half here at the McCarthy Athletic Center, and Gonzaga has etched their lead out to 10 points, 32-22 against the Maine Black Bears. Not a great display, obviously, Michelle Clark, of offensive basketball, but nonetheless entertaining basketball. Always fun. entertaining. Yeah. Always entertaining, yes. right, when they get to show us what they got. You know, we've seen a better Gonzaga team, um, and I'm sure Coach is going to give them a piece of that in the halftime you know, speech, but um, I would assume that Gonzaga is going to come out and we'll see a little different story here in the second half. Yeah, a lot of turnovers in that first half. Ten by one, eight by another, but a lot of points off the turnovers. And and Gonzaga had a trouble with this, and Maine did a good job turning these Zag turnovers into points. They did. You know, we talked about it before. Maine came in here unafraid. They had this confidence about them. They've been scrappy, getting on every single basketball, and Gonzaga just hasn't flexed their muscle back at them and said, hey, you can't take the ball from me. This is my home turf, and I'm going to get my elbows out and go straight up with it and make you foul me if you want to try to get the ball from me. Yeah, Gonzaga with eight turnovers in that first half, resulting in ten points. For Maine, it's a 10-point game, but it could have been a lot worse if Maine does not turn those turnovers into those points. But Kaylin Tron, like right, what what can you say? A senior, and when you need something, she's there. She's she does it all. You know her basketball IQ is so good. She just reads the floor so well. You see that little dump down pass there. She's dribbling, little you know side look for a little easy fast break look, and then. She can find her own, too. Little hesitation dribble. I'm going to get to the rim this time and get my two points. I think she knocked down a three. She's she's doing all the floor general things that need to happen for the Zags. We need a little bit more out of, the, out of that from her in this second half as well. But she's doing all the right things. You know, she's got one of those shots that when the ball leaves her hand, you just never expect it not to go in. Yeah. Eliza Hollingsworth talking about it going in. Boy, she really is the one that extended this lead to 10 points. Yeah, it's like Coach said. You take those three, two three-pointers away from Hollinsworth, and it's a different ball game. She came off of those screens knowing, you know what? This ball is going up before the ball was even in her hands. Big, big dynamic lift there for the Zags, and, man, did they need it to stretch that lead out going into the half. And, look, Eliza's in the scouting report, shoots it better than 55% from three, hit those two big ones, the junior from Melbourne, Australia. Halftime continues at the McCarthy Athletic Center when we come back. SWX is once again proud to open up the high school basketball season with a tournament that celebrates the life and spirit of Dan Fitzgerald. Join us on Friday as we bring you the Fitz Basketball Tournament from Lewis and Clark High School. Our doubleheader begins at 6.30 p.m. when the Meat Panther girls take on the Tahoma Bears. That game will be followed by the Lake City Timberwolf boys battling the Union Titans. It's high school basketball at the Fitz this Friday night only on SWX your home for local sports. All right, Michelle Clark, Gonzaga leads by 10 here at halftime. They do what in the third quarter to make it 20? Okay, keys to the game on that is they got to stay focused, defensive effort on the three, and those backdoor cuts, right? That disruptive offense that we've seen them running. Gonzaga needs to do a better job defensively, staying in possession, not getting beat off the dribble, and then contesting every single shot that Maine can get. Okay, a hand has to be in their face. And then offensively, Gonzaga, it's an inside-outside game, right? They need to get Yvonne Ejim going. Get her hands on the basketball, down low, get some easy twos going, and then work it out, right? Get Eliza Hollinsworth out there for a three again. Get Kaylin Trong off some dribble drive penetration and dishes, or if she sees the rim, get inside. If those two things happen, they walk away with a bigger lead than this by the end. You see, that's why she's sitting in that chair. Yvonne Ejim, 6.3 of 4 in that first half, 5 rebounds. Kaylin Drunk, is there a more fun player to watch? How about that little bounce? No look. And her sister, we need her back too.
And welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. Time now to get the third quarter on the move between Gonzaga and Maine. Black Bears just 22 points in that first half, but they did give Gonzaga a test. Michelle's been talking all game long about, you know, they have a, they have their own style, a lot of movement. I love to watch them play because it's constant movement. Constant, disruptive. You don't know what, are they going to curl off of, you know, a screen? Or are they going to come off an on-ball screen? Like, Gonzaga's on their toes 24-7. And it, you know, it started to wear them down a little bit. And I, you know, I wouldn't ask Coach this, but it looks like to me that Gonzaga, like, they just got home from the Bahamas, day off, right? Like, you got to get the engine rep back up. Got to get their, get rid of the sea legs, get yes. their feet underneath them, you know, feel the energy of their home court advantage here. I expect to see a better team this half. I shouldn't say better, but a team that plays with more robust energy. That shot way off and unable to save it down there, Paula Gallego. Gonzaga basketball. Great start right there. I mean, that's what you want to see. She's going to take a contested three, take it all day with a hand in your face. I, I don't think the percentage on that is very high. Here's Egypt cutting across, skip to the corner. Gallego's got her hand on it. 15 on the shot clock. Kaylin Trong all the way in, left hand. <laughs> like a surgeon. I'd love to see that all day. Caitlin yes. Tron coming off of an on-ball screen between her and Yvonne Ejim. That's buckets all day long. And a great seal down there, and it gave Caitlin just that soft touch off the glass. Back door. And then the turnover. Great start here for Gonzaga. Williams, nice catch. Turnover inside. At least defensively, I like the tone that they have set so far. You know, they're not allowing Maine to get away with some of those cuts and uh, passes that they were making before. They're really setting a tone here defensively. That's exactly what they want coming out here in the third quarter. Bornemann tried to get it inside to Smith. It's kicked out of play 11 on the shot clock. Maine basketball. But you see that, right? Gonzaga's getting their hands on a lot yeah. of basketballs now where they weren't doing that before in the first two quarters. Nice drive on the baseline. Nice find to Smith. Shot is off. Williams the rebound. Gonzaga will push it. Kaylin Trung again. Williams has it poked away. Hodgson was there for Maine. 12 on the shot clock. Trung with the spin into the paint. Dissecting her way. Bounced it off her foot into the hands of Olivia Rockwood and back of the Bears now. Fake the three, Borneman with the drive. Nice catch by Smith. Skip to the corner. Three on the way from Hodgson. And Egypt clears the miss. Gonzaga now with two turnovers here in the third quarter. They've extended their lead to 12. Kayla Williams. Free throw line jumper, good. And you can see her shake her head. She's been frustrated this game. Yeah, she has. She's had a couple good little one-two dribble jumper looks, but she hasn't been able to knock them down. I'm sure that felt good seeing the ball go through the net there. 7.22 to play in the third. Gonzaga up by 14, 36-22. But Kayla Williams going to work. Found a little opening. Connected from the line.
Tonight's smiles of the game brought to you by Delta Dental. We're on a mission to help Washington State stay 100% cavity free. Learn more, visit cavityfreewa.com to see how we're making a difference in our community. Brought to you by Delta Dental of Washington, proud supporters of Healthy Smiles and your Gonzaga Bulldogs. Zags are smiling. For the last 20 years, they've been smiling. The basketball's been so good. Got your Christmas shopping done, Michelle? Oh, How many man. kiddos do you have? Two. Yeah. I've done nothing, nothing so far, so thanks for reminding me right now. <laughs> well, that's what a good partner's for. <laughs> and Tronk takes it away, and then she's fouled by Olivia Rockwood. This is kind of what Coach Fortier was saying at that halftime break, you know, getting some defensive stops to get some rhythm and some transition breaks that they haven't really had because um, Maine has done such a great job of taking care, taking care of the ball. But I love the stance defensively that Gonzaga is coming out with. Hollingsworth over there trying to set a screen. Drunk sends her away. Egypt now up to get the ball. Devon, step back, jump shot. Poked out of play by Maxwell. Main basketball. I would argue that Yvonne had the jumper to begin with. She didn't even need to put the ball on the floor. If they're not going to respect her out there, she's a good elbow shooter. Knocked down a couple, so then the drive can open up a little bit more for her. I love her release. The, the hands are big, and it's always on the fingertips. Really soft. The backdoor cut, but kicked by Tron. Maxwell fakes the three, drives left hand, good. Fouled and a chance for three. And how did that start on the defensive end? Exactly what Coach Fortier said needed to happen. They are on those backdoor cuts. You see that hand there by Trong. Yvonne comes up with it. Nice little run out there. Great decision by Maxwell. She saw the open lane, converted the bucket. Now, as well as we know she, she can do at the three point, or at the free throw line, she'll turn it into three. Maxwell buries that free throw. Graduate player, grew up in Gig Harbor, Washington. Of course, played at Utah. Utes a really good team this year in the Pac-12. She's brought her game to Gonzaga to play for this team now that it's in the, ranked in the top 25. And they have the ability to score at all levels. They've got some size and really gifted at the guard positions. Four on the shot clock. Shot away, but uh, not in time, or actually didn't hit the rim. Gonzaga flexing their muscle defensively, really setting the tone. That's what we talked about that they needed to do. They've done a great job so far. Kayla Williams creates space, hits the jumper. She kind of leaned into that one. But Michaela now with four points. Zag players starting to come alive a little bit. They're waking up. Yeah, the energy's a bit different. Into the corner. Taylor drives the baseline and went right at Egypt and somehow got the bucket up and in. That's a freshman. And free throws coming. I love, though, Gonzaga didn't waste any time. Got the ball out, pushed it down the floor, and didn't allow Maine that time to set up in their full court press and broke it and got themselves got the, um, somebody at the free throw line there. Sarah Talon leading Maine, a freshman with nine points. And Eliza Hollingsworth at the free throw line. <laughs> Missing the front end, Redshirt Jr. Six foot three from Melbourne, Australia. She's got a range. She's got obvious size. Runs the floor. Missed both free throws, and that's off of number 13, Carolyn Borneman. Great pursuit by Stokes there, though, to keep the ball on their side here. And they ride an out of bounds play and see if they can get a couple points. Muma inside, Williams. Got it to Maxwell, that's a three. Brenna Maxwell from downtown. 
Maxwell all of a sudden was 10 points. And this is the run that Gonzaga has been needing, right? Some defensive stops, great offensive execution, and knocking down shots. And that 10-point halftime lead now at 20. Great cut and finish by Carolyn Borneman. Maine can play. It's just obviously Gonzaga bigger, more talented, but this Maine team. They're not afraid. Yeah, no, and they're not afraid, but they're also a, a heady team. A lot of IQ and the ability to shoot. And they're just playing hard. And and you when you come into a place like this in the kennel, you got to play hard if you want to walk out with a W. 421 to play in the third quarter. Zags have erupted here in the third. They've hit five of their first six shots. Maine two of their first six. And Brenna Maxwell getting it going for Gonzaga. The three-point bomb, she's got 10. Zags up. Gonzaga coverage of the game brought to you by Premira. Premira, proud partner of Gonzaga basketball. It's good basketball, Michelle. Good basketball. I love this tip there. Yvonne Ejim coming up with it, dribbling it down the court, finding her teammate. Maxwell making a great decision there, seeing the lane, taking it full into the rim, getting the end one, and then adding the bonus point at the free throw stripes. Great job. Gonzaga's done such an awesome job setting the tone defensively and getting some of this fast break transition, exactly what Coach Fortier said they needed to see at that halftime mark. Yeah, Bruno Maxwell with that three-point play that moments later hit a three, a traditional three. And now with 10 points, six here in the third quarter. Gonzaga up by 18, if my math is right. Quickly check that. It's been known to be off. Here's Smith. Taylor driving on Stokes. Boy, I like the way she thinks. Smith threw it away. Puma with it for Gonzaga. Look at, I mean, Maine almost had an offensive rebound, but how many Gonzaga players swarmed her there to, to steal it back away? That's the energy, that's the drive that I think Gonzaga was lacking in the first two quarters, but we're seeing it now. I think the message got home at halftime, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. Stokes drives with 10 on the clock. And I believe it, I was blocked by the official, went out of bounds. Should be Gonzaga ball. Yes, off of a main player. But eight on the shot clock, 335 to play here in the third. Williams missed it. Taylor with it for Maine. Outlet near side. Sarah Hodgson. Hodgson. There's Smith. Size advantage there. Borneman behind the back. Nice move. Got all the way in, but missed the shot. Stokes clears the miss. You see the length there by Hollinsworth that just kind of disrupted her shot a little bit. Gonzaga's bigger inside, and I love seeing them use their lengths and getting their hands up to disrupt those shots from Maine. Maxwell into the corner. Peyton Huma. Five on the shot clock, Peyton drives it in, hangs, and the rebound cleared by Carolyn Bornerman. Taylor with it again, here's Bornerman. Hodgson with the cut to the bucket. Defense, 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 defense. 
12 on the shot clock for Smith. Hodgson with Michaela Williams right there. Hodgson goes to the rim and is fouled. Will shoot free throws. Good quick move by Sarah Hodgson. Pretty good job defensively by Gonzaga. You know, brought him down to within six on the shot clock there, but got beat off the dribble and couldn't do anything but foul. Let's send it over to AJ. AJ, what do you got for us? Greg, I had my head in the huddle listening to what Lisa was saying to her team, and it's kind of what we just saw right now. When Black Bears are running this triangle off, and she just was basically saying what you hear when you're in about third grade playing basketball, and it's, you know, just call out the screens, switch on the picks, and you know what? It's always back to basics, let's be honest. It all comes down to it. It's working for us. Yes. It, it does. It it's, works for me. It, it, it's basics, yeah. right? Don't overcomplicate the game. It's basics. Just do the little things right. And communicate. Got to talk. Especially with a team as active as Maine. There's Maxwell. The bounce. Egypt. Burton is fouled. I love that action, though. I mean, that's exactly what you want from Yvonne Ejim. She just missed a little little bunny there, but her teammate had her back and getting the offensive rebound and now finds herself at the free throw line. Ejim ought to be in the pick and roll. She ought to just be a monster doing that. Pick and roll all day long. There's Destiny Burton, junior from Arlington, Texas. Missed them both. Oh, offensive rebound. Maxwell, Brenna, got it back to Burton. Destiny had a good look at it. Brenna Maxwell really working on that, on that play. Gonzaga missed out on a couple easy bunnies there. Good look inside. Payne settles for the three. That was off by number four, J.C. Christopher. And now Kayla Tron sets up the play. Burton sets the screen. Here's Stokes. Ejim out. Kaylee with the drive. Eight on the shot clock. Kaylin looked up. She knows. Into the paint. Main chases. And a spectacular finish by Kaylin Trong. How about that one? You know, every time she's gotten that dribble drive, she's rejected the screen and there's been an open lane and that help side defense has it come over. That's her basketball IQ right there. Taylor with a nice finish for Maine, but Kaylin with that left hand off balance, the kiss off the glass through defenders. So good. Turnover number 14 for Maine. And then the bucket by Abby Lawrence. I should have said the 12th turnover for Gonzaga. Yeah. You know, that's turning it, the last few possessions were a little bit of a, a, a rat race, you know, like who can get up and down the floor and they're, you know, such a fast pace, they're turning it over. That's where offensively Gonzaga just take a deep breath, okay? Slow it down a little bit, know when to fast break, know when to just walk the ball up, set your offense up get a good shot you don't you know you've got the lead right now you don't need to keep trading back and forth with these guys abby a 6-2 senior from portsmouth new hampshire offensive rebound off the miss that's gallego 25 seconds to play here in the third rockwood with it bornerman gallego Bornerman didn't get it off in time, I don't think. Didn't seem like it. They play on. There's Kaitlyn Trong, three to play. Shot on the way. Oh, yes! <laughs> Kaitlyn Trong does it all for Gonzaga. Six of ten from the floor. Two of four from behind the three-point line. 15 points, five assists three rebounds and the shot at the horn. Gonzaga leading at 49-31.
Kaitlyn Trong. Bang. And welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. Take a look now at the NC2A women's top 25, according to the Associated Press. South Carolina and Stanford there at one and two. They just played, by the way. UConn there at number three, Ohio State. But look, Louisville, Marquette now breaking into the top 25. Gonzaga suffered a four-point loss in between those victories against Louisville and Tennessee. And there's Gonzaga now at 23. They're good. You know, there's they're, nothing they're better. They're totally a top 25 team. And there's nothing better than starting the season with no ranking and then just coming out and beating some good teams and getting yourself in the ranking. Like, well-deserved. That's got to feel good. I almost wonder if that feels better than starting the season with I, a ranking. You I know? wonder. Because if they would have started at 23 with those wins, they might be in the top, you know, 18 or right. 17, 18. Right. Eight on the shot clock. Egypt. Here's Williams. Kayla drives. 17-foot jumper by Yvonne is off. Hollingsworth. The offensive rebound put back is good. You know, Hollingsworth has done a lot of the little things yeah. tonight. You know, the rebounds, hitting those big threes, knocking down free throws. Kind of she just quietly does all those little things for Gonzaga. Yeah, 10 points, five rebounds. But I love the fact that she at 6'3, she can stretch the defense shoot threes, but she can battle for an offensive rebound like yep. that. Egypt, the block from behind on Smith. It'll be main basketball, 10 on the shot clock. Good bounce. And the bucket goes for Olivia Rockwood. That's a good inbound play. Gonzaga's got to stop that, though. Yeah, that's just too easy, right? That's just Michaela Williams falling asleep on defense, and she gave her a wide open look. Just having some defensive discipline to stay on your man out of an out of bounds play. Keep an eye on Kaylin. She's got something up her sleeve, I can tell. Like a no look dish to Egypt. Yvonne can't connect, though. You know, when you're playing with somebody like Kaylin Trong, yeah. you keep your yeah. eyes on the basketball yeah. until it leaves her hands because you don't know when she's going to be dropping dimes and it's landing in your hands. This Sarah Taylor, good-looking player, 5'9", freshman, now with 13 points to lead Maine. No, Kaylin, you're right. You've got to be well aware at all times. And wait till Kaylee gets back. The two of them on the floor together. Spectacular. 
Well, it, it stretches the defense, right? They don't know what to expect out of not one but two players. Well, a good defense there by Smith. You, you don't see Yvonne Ejim's shot get blocked too often. Not often, but it was also awesome to watch Ejim and Trong work. Yeah. That little two-person game there. Yeah. Creating the shot, good defense, stifled it. But fun to watch. There's a three on the way, banged in by Olivia Rockwood. 51-38. Rockwood now with five. You know, I wouldn't write this one off with a team who can get hot from the three and get going here. You know, Gonzaga's going to need to stay disciplined, get the good shots, stay solid defensively the same way they started in the third quarter. Yeah, Maine has hit three of their first four shots here in the fourth. Williams, Dish, Egypt. Will go to the free throw line. Adriana Smith called for the foul. You know, they really haven't had an answer for that pick and roll um, with Yvonne rolling to the basket. They've kind of been able to get it whenever they wanted. Uh, they've just been scrappy to kind of get their hands on the basketball, but nice to see Yvonne get herself to the stripes. Yvonne now with seven points. That's her first free throw of the game. Hard to imagine that. Yeah. Fifty-three thirty-eight. And a whistle. And a foul called away from the ball. Then Yvonne? No, Michaela Williams. Williams. Yeah, she got a little physical as she's cutting. Nice catch by Smith off the inbound. Hollingsworth there defensively. Tailing with it, but stepped on that sideline. Turnover. Lucky break there for the Zags. They need to make sure they get a good offensive conversion here and really start to stretch this out even more. Ejim is normally good down the stretch in games. Get her on that post, get her the ball, let her go to work. Or give it to number 14, let her go to work. Let her go to work, yeah. She's been working it all night. Kaylin bounce. Williams was there. Kaylin missed the pass. Yeah, it looked like a good pass, went right through her hands, just wasn't ready for it. Chance here for the Black Bears to cut deeper into this lead. The drive left hand too hard by Gallego. Gonzaga with another opportunity. Here's Egypt. Hollingsworth really working inside. They got her the ball. Loose ball. Back comes Maine. Gallegos got it up to Borderman. And Tron gets back and tied her up. Causes the travel, and Caitlin Trong right now doing absolutely everything for Gonzaga. Yeah, not only wow. does she beat her back, but she says, hey, you know what? I'm going to get in front of you, and I'm going to grab my hand on the basketball and make you travel with it. You know, she could have tried to, you know, swipe it out or something. Instead, she causes a turnover, and Zags have the ball. This is one of those games. It's obvious Caitlin's just on a different level tonight yeah. Yeah. than anybody else on the floor. She's yeah. just on a different level. Her basketball IQ is, is, is it's, it's the highest on the court right now. 12 on the shot clock from the free throw line. Falls off. Adriana Smith, the rebound. Outlet near side, and now Taylor with it. Drive strong there to stop it. Burton cleared the miss. Kaylin again leaves it for Maxwell. Transition three, Maxwell now with 13 points. And that is Brenna's game. Give her space. Let her dial it in from deep. Another three.
And welcome back. 56 38. Gonzaga pulling away or trying. Gonzaga's hoops play of the game brought to you by MultiCare Health System. Whether you're at home or in the kennel, MultiCare's team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. Eliza Hollingsworth will go back to that, the end of that first half. Those shots by Eliza kind of spurred momentum. It did. It broke it open for them. You know, they were kind of struggling to make something from the outside, and they just needed a couple wins, right? And she hit two back-to-back -back threes that really broke that door open. I think just kind of give the the Gonzaga team that breath of confidence. Like, we got this. We, yeah. You know, come on. Let's just get back to what we do best. 5.25 to play. Back to an 18-point Gonzaga lead. Hodgson with the back door. Smith the handoff. Nope, she kept it. Burton there defensively. Here's a shot for three is off. Stokes the rebound. Rockwood missing. Peyton Huma, number three, with the basketball. Peyton, obviously a point guard of the future for Gonzaga. EJ with the double team right there. And a foul call. Smith and Hodgson had her tied up. Literally. You know, if I were made, I'd double team EJ too. You I have would to, not, right? You yeah, can't I, let her beat you. I would not want to give her a lane to the basket or any open look. You know, great defensive effort there by Maine. Stokes knocked to the floor. You can't run through a screen. No. <laughs> Stokes, great job just taking it straight in the chest and going back. Foul called on J.C. Christopher. Stokes with the basketball. There's Brenna Maxwell into the corner. Huma's three on the way. What a rebound by Stokes. Got it to each him. The left hand goes, but Callie Stokes up high to rip that down. I love Stokes' energy, man. She gets in there and fights. That was a, a hard-fought battle for that rebound and then tips it over to her to her teammate there in Egypt to, to knock down those two points. Yeah, redshirt freshman. She's going to be a monster. She's really physical, really active hands, and is always around the ball. And you know, she's bigger than she looks, too. I was kind of sizing her up at shoot around today. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, I'm as big as her. Yeah. And then when I got up to her, I'm like, okay, no. Yeah. No, I'm not she's as big legit. as her. Yeah. yeah, she is. She's a good athlete. Yeah, listed at 5'11. Kaylee looks to the bench. Here's Huma. Eight on the shot clock. Burt. Maxwell's got to shoot it. Didn't get it off in time. Oh, oh. they're going to say it counts. They're going to. Yeah, I think they need to look at that. That that was not off in time. Yeah, it didn't look like it was off in time either. But <laughs> Still in her hands. Yeah. <clears throat> Great shot. Great separation. But yeah, yeah, not even close. Still in her hands. That's not going to count. But it will give the Zags a little breather right now. You know, catch their breath, get some water, so they can finish the last three minutes and 23 seconds here in this quarter. They call the shot clock violation, main basketball. See, that's, that's how a review should go. Yes. Make it quick. Get over there. One little. Okay. Yep. Clear back to basketball. Yep. Hey, I saw. That something literally took different. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job by our officials tonight. It's a good crew tonight. Gonzaga up by 20. Borderman three. Really good. Carolyn from Horsham, Denmark. 5'10 junior. Now with seven points. 
Peyton Huma into the corner. Much better job by the Zags in the second half, breaking that, that press break. You know, it gave them some troubles in the first two quarters, but good adjustments on their behalf and finding an easy way to break that full court press. Burton. There's the jump shot. That's the one she's been waiting for. Two twenty to play. Stokes, another rebound. That's her seventh of the game. Kaylee with four point seven rebounds in eighteen minutes. Esther Little, Michaela Williams coming back in for Huma and Maxwell. Just the player substitution timeout. Well, and coming, I'm sorry, coming in for Maine is Aiden Schlausch, number 45. Go ahead, Bert. I'll give it to Maine. They came out fighting those first two quarters. They had a great game plan. They were executing it. They put Gonzaga back on their heels, made them have to make some adjustments and changes to their game. Um, but Gonzaga, a 23-ranked team, does what they do best, right? They, yeah. they make those adjustments. They come out. It's a different ball game. Coaches used to tell me, look, if you play 30 games, you get 10 really good efforts, 10 kind of average efforts, and then 10 bad efforts. If you're bad efforts, you can win half of them. Yeah. You're a good team. Yep. Zag is just a good team. Yeah, they are. This wasn't their best effort tonight. They're gonna, they got 60 points. Yeah. You know, they're coming back from some heavy travel the last few weeks in the Bahamas. Sun and nice, sand. beautiful place. And you know what? To their credit, they had to fight hard for those couple of wins that they got, yeah. you know, to get third place out of that yeah. tough, tough tournament. Um, and so, yeah, it is hard to kind of get your feet under you, get get back into a rhythm, plus with a few players being out too and trying to find that rotation and rhythm. And, um, and, and I should say they're right. Like, I, I realize they went to the Bahamas, but two of the greatest wins in the program history. And then they only lost to Marquette by four. By so four, it yeah. was really more of a business trip for this team down yeah, there. Yeah, big time, big time. Ten on the shot clock for Williams. Michaela got to do something. Drives it. Left it short, got it back. New clock out to 20. Little with it. Zags without one of their traditional point guards on the floor right now. You can tell the offense not running smoothly. Right, yeah. It, it, you realize how much of a difference maker it is when you have that floor general out there. Burton, great feed from Williams as the clock was ticking down. And Destiny from Arlington, Texas, with two buckets here in the late moments of the fourth. Stokes the deflection out of play. Gonzaga with James against Stephen F. Austin next, and then on December 4th, they go down to Stanford to play Tara Vandeveer and the second ranked Stanford Cardinal. That'll be fun. So much fun. Talon got it off long on the three. Little the rebound. Final minute to play here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. Yeah, Gonzaga's going to, you know, need to make some adjustments if they're going to walk into Stanford and bring it to them this year. They did a great job last year. Honestly, should have probably won that game. Um, but it's it's been fun to watch those teams go back and forth with each other every year. Hollingsworth ducks in. Lawrence cleared the miss. Final 23 seconds. Five seconds to play. This is shoosh. <laughs> that was a shot that was blocked. Ended up in the hands of Abby Lawrence. And this is going to be our final score. 62-43. And look, Gonzaga only scores 62 points, which is not their 
normal offensive output, but they just held a Division One team to yeah. 43 points. Their defense couldn't have been that bad. Right, and you know what? Defensively, Gonzaga always prevails, right? They always hold teams well beyond what their average scoring is. Yes, we've seen Gonzaga score more than the 62 points that we saw tonight, but we've also seen a better Gonzaga team than we witnessed today, too. Uh, I liked the adjustments that they made at halftime. We, they came out, we saw a different Gonzaga team, and they ended up with the W at the end. Yeah, and Caitlin Truck just a joy to watch. Time to announce tonight's player of the game presented by A to Z Rental. No job is too big or too small with eight convenient locations. We rent everything. Let A to Z rental be your most valuable player. And look, talk about how important a point guard is on a team when you have somebody like a Caitlin Trong. Like a Caitlin Trong, whose basketball IQ is through the roof. She can read the floor, passes dimes to her teammates at the exact point that they need to have it. But then she can also find her own shot too, right? I'm not just a, a an assist maker, but I'm also a point maker too. That's that's all you want in a point guard and that floor, floor general for your team. So much fun to watch play. Gonzaga with uh, 25 field goals in the game, 12 were assisted on. So Kaitlyn's final numbers, 15 points, six of 11 shooting, two of four from three, three rebounds, six assists, just two, two turnovers. And that's your starting point guard. And wait till Kaylee gets back, still nursing that foot injury. We want her back because tell you what, when they're both on the floor together, Really hard for a play-by-play -play guy because obviously they're identical and makes it difficult, but man, can they play. And they're like interchangeable because they literally are like watching the very same player yes. twice. Yeah. Oh, totally. Doubled. And it, it makes it so hard for those other teams to defend them, right? To find the personnel. Well, yeah. shoot, if you, just try to stop one of them. Just try to stop one of them. That's all you can ask for. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the games coming up for Gonzaga. Stephen F. Austin we talked about. Then they go to Stanford. Queens University of Charlotte, UC Davis. We'll be back on television with the Zags on the 17th of December against BYU. Of course, that's when they start West Coast Conference play. Yep. San Diego and Montana on the 21st of December. So, Hey, Whew. I wouldn't Here we write. Go. I wouldn't write any of those off. I mean, Stanford's going to be a tough one, right? Especially yes. at Stanford. But I'm telling you, UC Davis is a good ball yeah. team. Like they can come in and disrupt and do some good things. Gonzaga's got their work cut out for them before season play starts. You know they're smart. If they're going to school at UC Davis. You know they're smart. You know they're smart. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be. They'll have some basketball IQ. Uh, yep. Trust me on that. That is for sure. And look. Gonzaga is now six and one on the season, Michelle yep. Clark. Yeah. Like, I, I don't care what they do for the rest of the year before we get to West Coast Conference play. Yeah. They're six and one right now, and I, I'm not sure that, you know, the the, the kids in that locker room I think expected that, but anybody outside the program, six and one right now with those wins, yeah. spectacular. Big time. This is another NC two A tournament team. Yep. They've been there five straight years yep. now. Yeah. And they're going to get back there again this year for a six. And now. Do they do it by winning the West Coast Conference? We'll find out very shortly. Fun working with you. You too, Greg. Thank S you. Safe drive home. The Zags win it 62-43 for Michelle Clark, A.J. Howell. I'm Greg Heister. Good night from the McCarthy Athletic Center. The Zags winners again.